Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. So I will be doing my least favourite things about BookTube, and I'm guessing I'm probably going to get some dislikes, I don't know. But also, people seem to like these videos. Let me move ever so slightly. Here we go, scratch me head. So I talked about the possibility of maybe doing this video a little while back in one of my videos. You guys said you would like to see it. So I tried to write a list of 10 things that kind of annoy me about BookTube. <laughs> And I guess I'll talk about them now. Obviously, all the usual disclaimers. So obviously, if you do any of these things, it doesn't mean that you're a terrible person or that I hate you. It's just that my own personal taste or whatever. And uh, I could probably do another list of 10 if you want. So let me know in the comments. And also, obviously, let me know if you agree with any. But without further ado, let's get started. Number one. So this is... The lack of like backlist books and the lack of appreciation for the greats, I suppose, I would say. I mean, there is in some of the older booktubers, certainly. But I mean, I'm talking about even things like uh, Jack Kerouac, uh, Hemingway, I don't see a huge amount of on booktube. You know, or basically all of the books that I studied at university, like uh, a lot of poets, for example, like William Carlos Williams and uh, Walt Whitman and stuff. You very rarely hear about them on booktube. Um, Bukowski, apart from Paperback Junkie, is the only other person I see who really talks about Bukowski. But all of these different authors that, uh, I guess, have stood the test of time, you know? Is, uh, and that are part of literary movements and that are part of the literary landscape. And it just seems as though very few people read them. Everyone seems to be focused on just the new books that are coming out. And to be honest, I'd, I don't really care about new books too much. Maybe if they're written by a friend, I would be more likely to read them and uh, the odd one from an author that I've been reading for years, but I tend to, even with new books, if they sound good, I tend to give it a couple of years and then see what people are saying about it after all the hype has died down. So, yeah, one of the things I would like to see more of is more backlist. Number two. So this is dislikes on my videos, but also on uh, newbies in particular, or people whose channels I really like, or people who I know, I guess, I, what would you like a, a bit sensitive I guess not that and more like self-conscious you know when you f first start out doing booktube and you're quite self-conscious you're not used to standing in front of a camera and to see dislikes on people like that when they're making content I just think it's really kind of disrespectful it it's not it's not as easy as uh, I guess people think I, th I think most booktube creators don't use the dislike button I think it's only viewers who tend to use it no disrespect to viewers I think that you know that we're both required in the ecosystem you know but um I don't know it's, it can just be very disheartening and uh, it just makes me sad to see dislikes I don't think there's any real need for them I did get called out because um I talked in the past about why negative reviews are good and why they're healthy and um, somebody thought that it was a bit hypocritical to say, you know, I like negative reviews and I think that's good but I don't like dislikes. But the thing is, is dislikes are a rating as opposed to a review. Like, I don't like one star reviews that don't have any text to them or whatever, you know. So um, I guess if you're going to... All I'm saying is if you're going to dislike somebody's video, at least leave a comment and try and word it politely and let them know why, because then they can learn from it and uh, it just helps them to understand, you know? Number three. This is something that really bugs me and it's not having the books listed in the description. So I do that on all of my videos. Some people do, some people don't. I hear that people don't because they're worried that people are just going to click on the video and look at the books or whatever and then not watch the video. But honestly, I'm the other way around. I'll go onto a video and check to see whether the books are listed. And if the books aren't listed, I'll just go off it. Whereas if they are listed, I'll watch a whole video if I know, okay, well, the, you know, they're going to talk about this book that I'm interested in, for example. So, uh, and the same thing goes for when people in, in the thumbnails, they don't show the, the spines of the books. I just find it a lot easier. And I also think in terms of discoverability and search engine optimization and whatnot, it's just better to include the titles of the books. I know, for example, I've had people arrive on my videos because they've searched for one of the books in, say, a reading vlog or something like that, and it's pulled up my description. Number four. So this is hard to explain very well, but it's people who take it personally when you disagree with them. Now, I think most booktubers that I've talked to, it's been fairly, you know, it's been a respectful conversation if we've disagreed about something where perhaps they've loved the book and I didn't like it or vice versa. 
but some people do take it really personally and uh, it's almost as if you don't like their favorite book then you don't like them or something and um, I just don't think that's healthy so for example I saw early earlier this year a couple, couple of months ago um, um, the May Cave she read uh, The Handmaid's Tale and she didn't like it and for me it's like my book of the year and I think it was actually quite interesting to see why she didn't like it. Because I'm kind of like, well, I can see that. And I can see that. And I can see that. And it doesn't really take away from my enjoyment of the book or really change my opinion of it. But it does make me understand how somebody else could see it from a different point of view, if that makes sense. So I think it's really health, like healthy when we disagree. And uh, when we have a discussion, perhaps, and we take different sides. And I, I think 90% of people... Are, are, are good at just they won't take it personally they appreciate that we can all think different things and that's what makes our community great number five get ready with me's i i i think maybe it's a dude thing i i just don't care like i don't know i would rather i would happily watch somebody like talk about what they're talking about in a get ready with me and just sit there and talk like this but i don't want to sit there watching someone put on their makeup and choose their outfit and stuff it, if anything, it feels a little bit creepy to me, especially when s some of the people on BookTube are like, you know, 19-year-old girls or something. And I'm like, if Becca comes in and I'm watching this, <laughs> I'm going to have some explaining to do. So, um, but yeah, just I, I'm not interested in them, unfortunately. Number six, uh, it's like the lack of crossover, I guess, with other communities. So, um, it, I, again, it's hard to think of examples, but... There are so many lifestyle channels out there and like parenting channels and we're very good in, in booktube at collaborating with each other and doing tags and things but we don't often do crossovers with these other communities so for example i'd love to see uh i don't know uh, a booktuber and a gamer both talk about uh, uh you know one of the tom clancy games or something like that because they can both bring different viewpoints to it um, again with parenting channels they could work with booktubers to talk about books that are good for parents and that kind of thing um, I mean I don't I haven't really thought too much myself about it but it's one thing that I just as a viewer almost I would like to see and um, I don't know that's also why I get excited though that PewDiePie has started to doing his uh, book reviews on his channel number seven this is bad audio now I appreciate some people are filming on iPhones and stuff, which is fine. The quality on that is good enough, you know. Uh, the, you do have problems when people maybe go outside and there's wind, for example, or if they're not talking loud enough so you can't really hear them, or perhaps the music is too high in the mix and so, again, you can't hear what they're saying too much. Um, I mean, yeah, you need to be able to hear what people are saying. I'm not too worried about the visuals in people's videos, but I do like to be able to hear what they're saying. And if the audio is bad, I tend to have to just skip and go on to the next video. Number eight, lengthy intros and or outros. So you know when people have their sting for their channel? Do you call it a sting? Whatever, you know, the little sliders you have at the start and the end. I have one at the end of my videos, which is like a little bit of piano music and a subscribe button and a next video link. That's fine to have uh, an intro or an outro, but keep it to like three to five seconds, please. <laughs> Sometimes people have like 20, 30 second outros and I'm just there like, uh, like I've finished watching their video and I have to skip the end of their video to get the next video to play. So uh, yeah, that's just a bugbear for me. Number nine, I have called it the hype train. Um, just how certain books, everyone all wants to read the same book and they get very excited about one specific book. And invariably as well, it's not really a new idea in the book as well. It's like a retelling of so-and-so or, you know, the same story as this, but with gender swap characters or something. And it just gets really quite depressing, to be honest. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of hype in general, but um, some of the books that get hyped as well, I'm just like, oh God, what is going on in the world? And number 10, uh, diversity as opposed to diversity. So this is probably like my most controversial one on this list. Uh, there are there, like there are people who obsess over diversity to the point at which every book has to have like, uh, you know, uh, th there has to be some form of representation. It has to be like a, you know, a bisexual character or a, perhaps there's a male-male romance or, you know, there's a certain culture in it like the Maori 
culture written by a Maori author or something like that. And um, which I'm all for. I think all these books are great. And basically, books should be just a reflection of people as a whole. So these books definitely need to exist because they reflect people. However, at the same time, it seems as though a lot of the people that do obsess about getting diversity actually don't read a particularly diverse set of books. Like, it's quite often, you know, diverse representation, but only in fantasy or something, or uh, diverse representation, but only in new releases. Whereas I think to be a really diverse reader, you have to read everything. You have to read stuff from four or five hundred years ago. You have to read across every genre. You have to read every kind of author. And, and so I think just trying to read diverse books actually limits you because as diverse as that is, it's not as diverse as it could be. Did that make any sense? That probably didn't make any sense. Everyone's probably disliking this now. I don't hate people for their sexuality or gender or nationality or religion. I don't, I don't really care. You do you, boo. Yeah, you do you. All right, anyway, on that note, that's what I've got for this list of 10 least favorite things about BookTube. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of these things and let me know what your least favorite things about BookTube again. Remember, it's all just a bit of fun at the end of the day. Please hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. I guess hit dislike if you didn't. It all benefits the video in Google's algorithms either way, so... Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, hit subscribe though if you did like this video, and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.